In today's episode of the Photo Nerds Podcast, we ask, will AI ruin photography? Are we going to be left taking pictures in virtual reality? And there's some other random stuff. Yeah, come in. Come in, Gary. Come in. Come into my parlour and spider you, to the What fly. have you got? What, what's this? This is um, this is one of my favourite pictures from last year. Oh, I can as do a land, as a I can come around here. I, I, I got it printed large for a very good reason, because I wanted to pretty much test people who like pictures pretty much pick it up on what you said you're a pixel peeper you said did i hmm right but the reason why i chose this picture is because i shot this landscape last year at iso 8000 so as a backstory it's a very difficult shot to get because obviously with the lighthouse with the light spinning around a 30 second exposure is not going to capture a picture that looks like that so i shot it at 8000 iso but for my own peace of mind as well i wanted to print it to see what it would look like printed and on the wall and it looks stunning. Shot with a 5D Mark III, 8000 ISO. But the difference is, it's good when you view it from a viewing distance. Mm. But the that's what I, I said. I, I'm less than a meter away from it here and it still looks great. But that's what I said into it in the yeah. previous podcast. It don't matter if there's a bit of noise in there because the way the eye works, the further away we go, uh, the clearer it comes to that's the mind's right. eye. But when you walk up to it and pixel peep, yeah. I mean, you were looking at my pictures on the wall earlier on this morning, Adam, and, and you oh, were do, literally do you mean inches with, away. Do you mean with prints? Yes. Oh, right. You know, yeah, because I don't pixel people on the screen. No, no, no. Prints, sorry. I shouldn't yeah, say Yeah, no, that. absolutely. So, yeah. The, the, the reason for that is that it's like when I'm, say, if I go to the portrait gallery and look at a, a piece of artwork that's been drawn. Yeah. I appreciate it from a distance first. Sure. And then I'll get in close to start looking at some of the detail. And that's all I was doing with you. And that, the problem is, is when you should, just showed me that then, I knew... It was that high ISO shot. I'm, so you naturally wanted to come in, and I, I don't know—is it, is it is it to find fault or? No, no, or? not at all. It's just that I, I, I kind of knew what you were doing. That was okay. because we've talked about that image before. But, but, can, yeah, I mean, it's. But I just like to see. Like, I just like to get in close to see the detail. It's not. Have not I been promoted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from fence sitter to uh, 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 photograph holder. <laughs> you're not even a photograph holder. You're like one of the board even, ma- an advertising I'm not even doing man. it very well. <laughs> we get some go. straps. Like, put it over yeah. here. <laughs> Can I put this down now? Yeah, put it down. I'll put it over there. I think it's awesome. But I'm going to come and look at that from over here now and just have a look. And it's it, it, exactly my uh, thing. That looks pin sharp here now yeah. because I'm away from it. It's a beautiful picture. But That's a, a, it's lot, a thing a, with ISO though, isn't it? I think uh, uh, people uh, are afraid of it. But yeah. a lot of the really good landscape artists designed it that way. And I think we mentioned that last time. The design, they knew. And that's what's brilliant. They knew that the, 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 the piece of art, whether it was on a church roof or whatever, would yeah. be viewed from a long distance away. And, 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 and that um, emphasises it perfectly. Anyway, welcome back, in it. There's a, there's a, let me just, before we move away from that and digress, there's a small backstory attached to that. I went down to South Stack in Anglesey to shoot the Milky Way. Long story short, the Milky Way, when we got there, wasn't exactly where I thought it was going to be. Anyway, it didn't really matter. A bit like the same I shot wheels. that about three o'clock in the morning. I wanted to get some star shots in there, but get lower down from a lower perspective looking up the lighthouse. This is a true story, and it's a, a funny, a little funny, idiotic story in there as well. But the true story is, I walked down, remember this is half two, three o'clock in the morning, to grab that shot, and there was another fella that was there. I'd never seen him before. What and was I walked his name? Up, what was his name? No, no idea. Just said, <laughs> just, just said hello to the guy, that was all. And he then instantly introduced himself as a professional photographer, and if I need a hand with anything... To give me a shout. Well, how, I, how did he do that? Well, <laughs> honestly, it's straight up. I'm a professional photographer. This is not the one that yeah. had a go because you only had a two pound camera. Was no. it? It's a different mm. different guy. No, no, this is different. different now, color. to be fair, he didn't say it to sound like an ass. He came across quite nice, but he basically just said, Look, if you want a hand with anything, I'm here, just ask. And I thought, <laughs> Okay, that's rather unusual. Uh, not that I'm expecting him to know who I am, but he, he just introduced himself as a professional photographer, which I thought you was You clearly rather... don't look like one. No, obviously yeah. not, no. And, um... <laughs> Did he have a mirrorless camera? <laughs> <laughs> so we're starting to take some pictures, and he was huffing and puffing and huffing and puffing. And I said to him, Oh, what, what's the problem? Bear in mind, obviously, you know, it's really quiet, just the two of us there. He goes, I'm just trying to get this damn picture. And I can't get the picture how I want the picture to look. So I just said, well, how do you want the picture to look? He said, well, I'm, I'm stuck now because I want to try and get a strand of light because it was quite misty, so it worked out perfect. So I showed him the back of my camera and I said, you mean like that? 
And he said, oh my God, that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I said, well, I said, just put these settings in your camera then and you'll get it. He goes, oh, thanks a lot if you don't mind. I said to him, ISO 8000, sorry. I said, it's ISO 8000. He said, ISO 8000. And then looked at me as if I, I was completely yeah. idiotic and didn't have a clue what I was doing. He said, I can't put ISO 8000 into my camera. Now, I said, well, what camera is it? It's a 5D Mark IV. I'm using a 5D Mark III. So, of course you can. He said, no, because he sells his pictures to magazines and magazines have a limit of ISO 1000. Right. Oh, really? Interesting. That's what he said yeah. to me. That was only last year. Seriously, that's what he said to me. He said, he said, I'd be laughed at if I tried to put, or if I uploaded an image and they saw in the EXIF information mm. that ISO was 8000, he said they wouldn't print it. And yet, oh. it's printable on a, well, a an image that yeah. size, so certainly in a magazine or on the internet when it's going to be that size. So I said to him, well, okay, but you won't get the picture otherwise. More full magazines, do you know, like... The Ridiculous, There's a reason the print media is de in decline, isn't it? It's just stuff like that. It's well, I'm on the fence with that one. <laughs> I mean, what, as in what? How, what how can you find fault with that? I'm not. I said I'm on the fence. I'm just being silly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let me tell you the. Um, you know, sometimes when you come across as a, as an idiot, I do. Well, <laughs> we were taking that. We were taking some shots down, and he said to me, he "said um, I'm just going to pop a few flashes. Are you okay with that?" I said, yeah, okay, let me just finish my uh, my exposure. Okay, so off you go then. I had my my, my hat on my, with a head torch on it. So I said, one sec. So I pressed the button to switch the head torch off. So I'm sat there waiting for him now. And, it, and it was going on. I'm thinking, what's this idiot doing? Obviously, not too many. And what it was, right, is when I turned my head torch off, you know, it goes through a cycle when you press the button, you're already ahead of me, aren't you? Yeah. And you press the button and it was flashing. It was my head torch that was flashing. So he's probably thinking, when what's is this, this idiot, yeah. idiot going to switch his head torch off? And I'm thinking, when is this idiot going to stop flashing? <laughs> oh, that was funny. That was like a good pair together. That was a good icebreaker. <laughs> so did you ever get his name? No, oh. no. He did tell me his name, but I can't remember. You can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, that's that's printing um, and magazines for you. It's a bit strange, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Especially shame. Especially because you know the article's going to be small. You know yeah. that. But he said, he said I, I, I just can't shoot at ISO 8000, but never mind, I'll get the shot. And I, I said, you won't. Anyway, I didn't mm. say that to him. I've got a shot you of Flamber Lighthouse that I shot at 3200 mm. to get the to get the beam in there yeah and when that's printed you can't see the noise at all no, no. i mean it isn't as sharp it's, as it's, it's not as sharp as one no. iso iso 100 but it's not enough to not print it it's not even close to i mean that's no that's 8000 it's well worth printing that big isn't mm. it it's, but it's a huge print as well so if obviously i printed it much smaller you it, would it wouldn't be as noticeable it, it's possibly dependent on what media it's going to be put on I mean, as you say, that, that sat on the wall and I'm, what, six foot away from it, it looks great. Uh, but let's say you put that ISO 8000 in, a, in, a, in, in a, a magazine, it might be more noticeable that the noise is there and then the old adage that you don't want noise in your pictures comes out. But that's the thing for the artistic license for me. And it's, for example, mentioning uh, uh, shooting trees in, in woodland. Sure. Uh, having some noise in there is not a bad thing. No, you know, so it depends what you're shooting and what what you're trying to achieve. But I've always said it, you know, you get something and you blow it up big, it's designed to be looked at ten, fifteen feet. Away. Well, I've, well, I've always not totally understood with some people's opinion that don't like ISO or noise, mm. is that why did why were we so willing to accept film grain? Mm. Sure, and then and then and then we would just utterly refuse to accept ISO, which is uh, it's bizarre. Like uh, it's... And I think it'll go full circle, and I think you're going to see more and more people shooting, younger people shooting, because they'll want something different. Because maybe it's the uh, the transition from uh, film to digital, because we can get lovely yeah. clean images. That uh, uh, it's like the new thing, isn't it? But you like know, with landscape photography, old. you spend you spend so long or so much time shooting at ISO 100. Mm is that sometimes you forget that you can move away from that. Sure. Like I did it yesterday when I was out in Yorkshire, just to just went up to like 320, I think, just mm. to freeze the tree that I was shooting. So there wasn't branches blowing mm. about just to get the shot. Well, ISO 320. Yeah, just just that touch. Well, that's to, really, really pushing the boat yeah, out. Yeah, but it, I, just, I, I only needed that much to get the shutter yeah. speed up yeah. to a point where it was going to freeze the, 
the, the branches in the wind. But imagine now if you're shooting lights in Las Vegas at night and you want the colours as they are, then the chances are your ISO is going to be screaming high. No, yeah, because I'd, I'd go long exposure in that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you just got all white lights and you wouldn't get the different colours. That's why I, I made a video out on, 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 on shooting at night in Blackpool. So yeah. when the Blackpool tower is all lit up, you a 30 second exposure, all the lights are all white. Yeah. They They're burn, all white. They burn out. But if you raise your ISO and shoot at a, 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 a very fast shutter speed, now you're capturing the lights as they are. Say that being again. Lit. I don't understand that. Right, because you, you've got lights on the Blackpool Tower and they're up and down. Orange so reds, green, yellows, orange, greens, yeah. and they're all flashing. Or oh, move, moving, yes. you mean? Yes. Right, okay. Well, that's the same as Las Vegas. You know, all these lights are flashing and yeah, so on okay, and so forth. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah, so well, it, a 30 second exposure, yes, with your ISO down to 100, of course, you're going to get a crisper, cleaner image. But now you've lost the trace of the lights. They're now, they're going to override each other until eventually they're just a white light. I get what you mean, because it's mixing you know the colours together. Yeah, but because hmm. I've, I've shot. Um, I've shot the Millennium Wheel in London. Was it? Yeah, London yeah. Eye, is it? London Eye, yeah. Yeah, I've shot that before at night, and it was like a 22-second exposure or something. And that's that has lights on it. They're all red, so you get the nice... Something's just beat there. Sort of, I think it's Gary's uh, delivery, isn't it? What did a doorbell? There was a, there was a beep. It, yeah. didn't, it sounded like a, a camera and one switched off. What? It, well, I don't think it was. My cameras, does, cannons don't make that noise. It, was, it came from in his office. Did it? I see. Younger ears, that's what it is. Mm, absolutely. <laughs> I'm going deaf though. Do you do, do, you do you do much printing? Eh? Do you do much printing? I do, I do. Yeah. I've not done as much uh, research since we I've never seen one of your prints. No. Can you bring they're, some they're, in? They're, yeah, they're all on the floor in the living room at the moment. I'd love to see Yeah, because I've not put them out. I've not put them uh, on display. They all came down from the old house. Right. And um, I've also moved my office um, about three or four months ago. Yeah into a bigger room yeah. and uh, the printer I've not even connected it yet but it will be I will, my, not this week's vlog but next week's vlog which may be uh, last week's vlog because we're yeah. podcasting but we'll have me printing it's such a nice thing to do printing. like I, I love looking at people's mm. prints it's just such a my uh, a lot of them you see are black and white a lot of them are, is that is, well, where's that is that dirt or yeah yeah um, a lot of them are that because my favourite and I mentioned this while you were here uh, mm. Adam uh, my favourite genre by Country Mile is black and white. Yeah. And I, haven't, I don't think I've ever vlogged it other than having an odd image as black and white because I never thought it was particularly popular. But I think that's going to change. Yeah. But I do, I do, and I think they look stunning on the walls as well. I think social media has been a problem for black and white, hasn't mm. it? It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't do as, it doesn't build popularity like a big saturated image. No, well. no. I mean, I'm looking at those two and it's just, it's just personal taste because I'm looking, now I'm looking, if you don't, no, you won't see it, but we've got three of Gary's, Gary's images on there. One's the old man of store, do it water, and what's that? Is that what is, is that? Glencoe. Glencoe, yeah. And um, the, the ones I'm drawn to are the two black and whites, but it's just personal taste. I think they're all three are awesome. But I mean, that, you've, we mentioned, didn't we, that you uh, a bit away, and we mentioned that on the last podcast, but yeah. we wanted to ask you the question because we thought it'd be really interesting, didn't we, Gary? Mm, absolutely. Uh, if you won the lottery, money was no object, what would you buy? Ooh. Well, I'm going to think you're 100,000 subscribers, so surely you're rich yeah, enough yeah, now anyway, aren't you? Money, yeah. money, no object. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Um, so there's the question. Yeah. Money, no object. I know we've covered it before, but I think it'd be a perspective I from you. I don't think I'd do anything that much different. Yeah. Like, I'd, I'd... Now, that's really annoying. Well, I, 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 I read that in the newspapers. Gladys and, uh, and Jim have won 29 million on the lottery. They go, it's not going to change me. And I'm going to sit at home and sit in this bungalow. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, mean, I, but, I mean, I've, I, I guess I've spent the last little while chasing my dream. So it's not, yeah. the, the other thing is I genuinely don't give a hoot about money. Mm. I, gen, it, it's a problem. Like really, I should care about it more than I do. Um, and, so, as what? long as I've got enough to pay my mortgage and feed my kids, and then you're not bothered, and get around, travel about a, a little bit, then that's all I need. Like, I, I, I buy, if I buy like new stuff. I mean, if, since I've started my own business, I haven't really bought anything for myself. No, like I've I, the, the clothes I wear cost it's cost the t-shirts cost about four pounds. Mm. It's it's that fast fashion thing, is it fashion? 
don't know if you know this, but the fashion industry is a massive damager of the environment. Ecologically, it was. Is, it, is it something like how many uh, um, tons of water does it take to make one pair of jeans? Something terrible. It's, but it's so horrendous. They, they, they make a t-shirt like this for three pounds. Yeah. People wear it twice and throw it away. Yeah, it's awful. I buy a t-shirt for four pounds and I wear it for the next four years. <laughs> I've got stuff in like, my I, in my. I've got stuff in my wardrobe that's 15, 20 years old. The stuff I wear day to day is that I've got like a set number of items of a particular type of clothing. So I've got a couple of pairs of jeans, mm. a few t-shirts, and it costs not literally nothing. Mm. All um, my expensive gear for for uh, of clothing is to get out and about. Yeah. Like, a, I, I've got a fairly expensive coat and a, like, decent pair of walking trousers. That's, that's, that's weird. it. You need but some necessities are, Yeah, so I'm spending it. money on tools, essentially. Yeah. We're the last yeah. people in the, in the world to give fashion advice out. Yeah. Well, well, exactly. You buy right. stuff from Oxfam, don't you? <laughs> it was like, this, it's like the uh, the Steve Jobs theory, isn't it? Is yeah. he wore the same thing every single day just, just to, remove, easy. to remove that worry from his I life. His thing. So he, yeah. wore, he wore the same thing oh, really? every single day, yeah. So you didn't have enough to think about it. Were you fashion conscious when you were a kid? I, outwardly, yeah. Because yeah. like, you're you trying, to you're trying to attract girls, aren't you? Yeah. So you want to, you want to look good. I, I was in my Oxford bags. Yeah, in the seventies. So, oh my god! But some I'm people a, would be thinking, "What?" Huh? I was never a trendsetter. <laughs> no. I just what are my mates wearing? I'll get a pair of like. I was the same. My oh. mates are wearing kickers shoes. So yeah. I'll buy a pair of kickers yeah. shoes. Or you know, what I mean, I, my hair, my mates are growing their hair long. So I'll grow my hair long, but yeah. my hair's really curly, so it goes turns into some sort of. Mine was it? platform shoes. Have you got curly hair? Uh, yeah, uh, it's really curly, interesting yeah. to see. Mine was That's platform a... shoes. You're talking about kicker shoes. Mine was DMs. platform shoes. Well, ours was kicker shoes and farrows, kicker shoes with a uh, Grosch bottle tops on the top <laughs> on the on the laces. Platform yeah. shoes. And if you didn't have them, because it was awful when we were younger. I don't know what it was like in your era or your era. So I'm in the middle of you two, really. But if um, you didn't have a pair of Farra, um trousers. You were bullied. I was bullied anyway, but yeah. you were bullied even more. I remember my mum, she went and bought me a pair of shoes from Clark's, right? And I said, Mum, I'm not wearing them. They're girls' shoes. They are girls' <laughs> shoes. And don't be so silly, you should be mum in Irish. Actually. Don't be so silly. She says, go, go out to school in them. And I hid them. Every day I put my old school <laughs> shoes on and I hid them <clears> uh, <throat> underneath the bush and then put them back on again to come home. And I, I, I ended up shaming her. So a friend of mine, he got all the trendy stuff I am Mark if you're listening and uh, he had a pair of night division trainers to go to school in and he wore these until they were falling apart and then got home to his house because I always used to go to his house walking over from school and his mum's there and with a new pair of trainers and he goes oh great the next new pair of trainers I says to his mum can I have his trainers <laughs> so I put them on now he's got big pancake feet so they were far too big for me and I lolloped over and my mum went where's your shoes I says, well, I've not got many more because Mark's given me his old trainers. And she says, Next day, she took me to a sports shop and let me Did have she? a pair. Uh, <laughs> she I, got shamed. <laughs> I had a similar experience one time. So I used to be in um, the Scouts, the Cubs sort of thing. Went on one of the camping weekends you do, and there was like a there was a theme on one of the nights. It was like a cowboy theme. So you, it was there was a competition to see who would be the best dressed cowboy. Uh, so I sort of told my mum about this, like, mum, I need a cowboy outfit. So she's gone out and bought me a cowboy outfit. But she was, she's always been, like, quite liberal and uh, she's a teacher and she was part of the CND and uh, doesn't like guns, all that sort of stuff. So she bought me this cowboy outfit but didn't buy me a gun. Right. So I've got this, like, hat, these, this, like, one of the shirts they wear. I've got the, the boots with the stirrup things on them. Yeah, and then she's bought me a gun holster <laughs> yeah. but no gun. She give so you I've, a banana to put in it. No, nothing. Like, so I've gone to this like cowboy. I've dressed up as a cowboy. All my mates are there with these little like cap guns. And I'm sat there with a holster with no gun in it. Mm. <laughs> it's like, I didn't win, <laughs> surprisingly. And you remember it all these years. I, um, I, tell, I remind my mum of that recently. And she said, yeah. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> we were talking off camera about some of the awful things that we used to do as kids. And that reminds me. Is, uh, when we used to go on holiday, that's what we, I would do. I'd go to the nearest shop, get a cap gun, find a mate and run around the hotel for two weeks firing this cap gun up and down the uh, 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 the hallways where all the rooms are, and I'm just we were saying what I would do if kids were doing that in my hotel these days. Yeah, I'd go absolutely nuts. You wouldn't be happy, yeah. would you? Yeah, that that smell of a cap gun yeah. firing, that 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 would that would bring back memories of youth. Yeah, I think absolutely. You'd does. still remember the smell, wouldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, they don't yeah. have them these days. Kids don't have them. Do they not? Yeah, I'm sure you can get them online. You know, the, the red caps, oh, wow. the red cap reels, but I've never seen them, not for a long, long time. Wow. 
You spend like a, a paper roll. Yeah, you know, that's right. Because you could. We used to like when you, if we were getting a bit frivolous, like you yeah. can roll it out and, and then get, get a coin. 10p coins. Yeah, and run it across. Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> we're not that far apart in age. We've yeah. learned a few things today about your past. <laughs> we well, have. Who else? At least said about I went to school though. in red car. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where? Sorry, excuse my English. Where's Red Car? Uh, North in the northeast. Yeah. 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 Steel Town. Yeah, I don't ICI think you. I don't think we digressed ever so slightly, but I don't think you answered the question. So, if money was no object, I mean, surely. Okay, what about? Um, um, I tell you what. I'd, I'd, if, okay, I, if money was no object, I would buy property. So I'd have a place in London. Yeah. I love London. I'd have a little crash pad type thing in London. I'd have probably a bigger house where I live now, mm. and I'd just buy a couple of little bases in various locations that I like to shoot on a regular basis. Mm. Right. Maybe a little cottage in Scotland. What or... about a new camera? At the moment... I mean, there must I, be something. I'm think... excited. I mean, I, I'm excited about that 100 megapixel Fujifilm medium format camera. It's funny, funny though, because we, we, we came to roughly the same conclusion, didn't we? Mm. Both of us did. Yeah. Uh, and we said, uh, we always like the term Leica and Hasselblad. Um, and I know, I think you've been out, haven't you, with the great Charlie Waite the last couple of days? Yeah, when I was And he brought his old film Hasselblad did, out, yeah. uh, which we'll hopefully touch on a little bit later. But would you would you not think about it, but about possibly going down the Leica or Blad route, or would you, would you would the Fuji 100 megapixel be? A... Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you get it's one of the things I talked about with Charlie yesterday, actually. Or he he sort of mentioned it is that where. If say if you buy a Hasselblad camera now, mm. medium like medium format, 100 mega, even the Fujifilm one, 100 megapixels, mm. medium format. Are you how often are you printing 10 foot wide images that make the most of that yeah. of that resolution? Yeah, sure. I mean, and, uh, and, and, and but if money was no object, maybe yeah, I would. I'd yeah. have a big gallery. With ten foot, I oh, know we're getting there. Now yeah, we're getting yeah, there. Yeah, 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 now yeah, we're getting well, there. I'm expanding my you know, but, <laughs> my material possessions, aren't I? But, but you know, th this is something that's commented on and then gets slated in the comments about APS-C versus full frame, uh, full frame versus medium format, uh, uh, using a fifteen grand lens versus a bridge yeah. camera lens. Of course, there's a difference between them, yeah. but how much of a difference is there? I'm just, I just, don't, I'm just not that materialistic. No. Like, I think my sort of career path. Shows that I was always but, interested in, like, sort of helping people out first before I helped myself. Basically. It's sure. what Charlie was saying about that's what I'm alluding to is yes, there's a difference in quality, but how many people need that amount of quality? Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the difference between shooting my D850? I don't know, there's a difference. I know people are going to say the difference. I guess it's money was no object, though, you'd just do it, wouldn't you? Yeah, like because you can, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or I don't, I don't know. I if I, if I had so much money, I, I still think I'd have some level of guilt of having yeah. that much wealth. Like yeah. it's, I'd be looking to do something productive with Philanthropic. it. Philanthropic. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what, I mean, that's what I was thinking. I, I probably would, but yeah. I'd, I'd, I struggle with that idea a little bit of these people that have built up huge wealth mm. first and then they do some good. It's like, the, it's like the American dream, isn't it? Apologies to all our American friends, but... You, the kind of American dream is you build up a lot of wealth for yourself and then you start helping other people. Mm. And that's not, that's kind of the opposite I, I, way around. I, I understand <laughs> exactly. I, 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 I understand exactly what you're saying, but I mean, you know, like for example, Bill Gates, a very much, but he's now giving away the majority of his wealth for yeah. good causes. At least he is doing, yeah. because there are certain other, a certain billionaires that don't. And, yeah. you know. I mean, that, that's what they're talking about with, uh, with as AI comes in. Mm. So a AI is going to, shake up lots of things it could potentially shake up photography as well mm. you've got this ai now with various new systems that are coming out that will will compose a good picture mm. for you i can't remember the name of the system is it arsenal or something that creates like a it'll create a composition for you based on this an algorithm and yeah, based, yeah based on this ai ai slash algorithm yeah and it's in it, but it's disrupt. It could just. Dis it's going to disrupt everything. So you get certain companies that, like a Facebook or a Google or Apple, that they're going to that use AI to undo a lot of jobs that exist now, pull in all this wealth. Mm. And there's got to be some way in the future of distributing that wealth. That's because why I think I mentioned it in the last podcast and many more previously. There's going to be a backlash, and it's not going to be a backlash from our generation going to be a backlash from the generations to come because i mean i think it's hawaii or one of the companies is creating this <clears throat> ai system 
uh, where it will virtually do everything for you. And I've seen it with when I've taken iPhone shots and how clever the uh, system is. Well, it does it now to, with exposure, to, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, with exposure yeah. and everything. And, yeah. it's, and it does it really, really well. Um, but um, have you seen the, or read the book Ready for seen the film Ready Player One? Yeah. Uh, well, the guy who uh, wrote that, is, I'm reading another one of his books. Yeah, so uh, uh, the guy's called Klein, and I'm reading one of his books at the moment, and um, he was saying why in Star Wars uh, was the TIE Fighters and, and the X-Wings not flown by remote control? And it got me thinking about photography, and uh, we're not in the too far distant future that if we want to, what we'll actually do is fly a drone up to the location remotely, take the picture. Oh, without, without even leaving your house. Without even leaving yeah. your house. Yeah. So then that gets to the next stage, then where's the fun in that and then people are going to say you know what i want to do it the old-fashioned way yeah. i don't want to fly a drone from my house i want to go and i want to feel the wind on my face and i think this is gonna we're gonna see full circle yeah, with the kids I, the, the, I don't think the i don't think the backlash will ever overtake the momentum though no. it's, it's the same with like with lps and with film photography mm. now but Just you're, on, you're thinking that as a 38 year old man i mean you 38 yeah yeah uh, but i'm thinking of our kids when they are sick to death of the fact that everything because oh, it so all feels so new to us I mean. yeah it yeah. feels new to us but what's going to feel new to them is to pick up a camera and it's something um uh, 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 gary said and put a piece of film in right. it and go out and physically shoot it do you think there'll ever be an end to pro the progression though like with... i think he'll go around in circles mm -hmm. i worked in the nhs for donkey's years and when you're in an organization in any organization mm -hmm. So what you see is, is all the ideas come around for well, a circle. what happens in the police. It does do. Well, one, yeah. one thing, I've, have you ever come across, right, you, I, I don't know how much you, you play computer games. but did do in the past, lots. There's a, there's a, a new thing of taking landscape photography in computer games. Have you come right. across that? No. Because they're creating, the, some of these created worlds now, I mean, you see it in films, don't you? But it's mm. existing computer games as well. Some of the environments they're creating are absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Like it's great work. Mm. But so you now have got people, gamers, going in. I was doing it last night. Were you? How bizarre is that? And just taking these screenshots of these amazing landscapes. And I heard, I think I mentioned it to someone not so long ago, and they got really upset about that. Mm. And I'm thinking, this is just everything that's wrong with the world. Mm. And I'm thinking, well, is it? Mm. Or is it just an addition? Like it's, you know what I mean, if you can, nothing's going to stop you from going out and taking a picture. No, and if if, if you, you could have, like, if you're do, if you're just in your house on a rainy day when you're not going out, and you're just playing a computer game, mm. and you you appreciate the the work that's gone into creating that world, and you're taking a little screenshot of it. I, I think that's cool. Like I it's, think it's awesome, and I've got nothing wrong with it because we have all three of us being accused of being dinosaurs, aren't we? <laughs> but uh, moving on with technology and how technology moves on, uh, I haven't got a problem with it at all. In fact, I've got a, a VR headset, I've got it for my kid, and it's not good enough for the moment. But I can't wait for the time where the VR is really good enough that I feel like I'm in that world. It's brilliant, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Uh, and to immerse myself, like the, the, the film Ready Player One, will be absolutely awesome. And the fact that you could go anywhere in the world and you feel like you're there and you could walk around that environment and then pick, take a landscape picture. It's like, with it's, the, it's like we have now with the uh, with doing photography on your phone. It's like I, did on, like I did the other week where you take a picture with your, your phone, which have got really good cameras on them now, and then I edited it on my iPad in the field. Mm. And it was just a really nice experience of doing that. So you do, mm. I'm doing the photography and then the post production because people always say to me, I, "I don't like, I don't want to spend much time post pro, pro, doing post production because I want to be out in the field." Mm. So I, I did both in the field, mm. and it was a really great experience. But mm. I mean, I talked about it replacing it in that video, but it it's just nice to have that. Do you know what I mean? In addition to sure. the big camera and the the, the big megapixels, mm. or whatever. I like the addition of that new technology well, to what I'm awesome. doing already and it's just amalgamating it all. Mm. I love it. it. In computer games, you can learn about um, composition and light. You can walk around in a, a, a third-person perspective. We're not talking about a little character, a third-person perspective where you literally are looking through the eyes of the person walking. Yeah. And you can um, you see light, you see shadows, you shoot into the sun, you get in the flare, or the, just like you would do on your camera. So what's this software called? No, they're just, just computer games are just so good nowadays. They're so realistic that you can 
have a third person perspective that's not a little character running around by the way that's where literally you are the eyes of the person running around hills mountains fields and you can certainly learn uh, about perspective you can learn about light because um, you, you find yourself looking directly into the sun and then you've got the flares all over your lenses yeah. as you start spinning around. It's so realistic. As you move, the shadows move with it. So you can learn so much about landscape photography. Sat from your, which if you think about it for a second, if you imagine people who are disabled or can't climb mountains. Yeah. Now, okay, it's not the same as the air, you know, um, whisking through your, or the, 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 the wind whisking through your hair, if you understand what I mean. It's never going to be the same as that. But for people who are not able to climb mountains, yeah. or maybe bed bound, for instance, at least it'll give you an idea mm. and it'll help your photography skills no end. And also imagine it as a training tool. So, so say mm. <clears throat> at the moment you might pay as well two, as you, yeah, yeah. 200 pounds for a day's workshop yeah. to a photographer. Say if you could pay that photographer 20 pounds and you are in a VR, with that photographer yeah doing it and you're teaching them about the composition they're they're in their house you're in your house doing a, a workshop basically yeah but you could do it as the photographer you could do it with 20 for 20 people do you know what i mean so you could mm. be teaching that that'd be great wouldn't it like in, you've got a fly in your head and then you can um it's normal <laughs> and then you can uh and then you can go out and do your own landscape photography can't you and mm. you, it's it's never, going to be a, it's never going to be a substitute. I, never, I agree. And you've, you've come across, you, you've two have made some real valid points, but I don't take pictures for either of those things. I mean, I'm very lucky that I'm not infirm, and I think it's mm. brilliant. And I think there are a younger generation that will find it a, a great fun. And that idea of uh, AI to aid or as a teaching tool is great, but it, it just belays the fact that the reason I go out and take pictures is you mentioned it a while back is to meditate. And uh, it's my downtime and to, to switch my brain off. So all the computers in the world won't, won't, won't stop me from going out. No, no. Even should, with no, the cardboard no, box. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's not really what I'm saying. It's, no, it's, no, you're not. I'm just of, saying it's looking at it from different points. It's point, just that it? It, I, I love the addition of all this technology yeah. to, to kind of add to yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. I, I was looking at it last night. I looked at it a What's few it times. What's it called? Uh, well, just a, um, just a battlefield game. Any, any, any kind of... Um, Wary. No one is first, battle, first battle, person perspective. What, battlefield, the new Battlefield. Uh, well, it's one of the Battlefields because yeah. my lad's got it on his PlayStation, so I'll take yeah. a look. So you can pick up a camera and go around and shoot. No, no, no. You're not picking a camera up. You're walking through the landscape. Oh, just as a person. Oh, yeah. But yeah, whether you've but got the a camera, you, the yeah. fact is, take, it's so realistic. Then. And yeah, yeah. take a yeah. screenshot. Yeah. But it's it's so realistic that I was thinking about vlogging. Have um, you have you heard it? Have you heard about simulation theory? Simulation well, the, the theory. Thing, everything's a simulation. Yeah, everything's yeah. a simulation because Elon Musk is a big uh, proponent of it. Uh, and some uh, very clever people from MIT and various other things. That, what do you mean? That basically, with now, the, way, yeah, the way the computers are going, uh, it basically says that, uh, because is it Moore's Law, where every year they double in power. Yeah. Uh, and what we've got at the moment, which is very, very close to not being able to establish whether you're in the real world or... Or a computer world, and what it, it, the theory behind it is, Gary's looking like I've grown two heads. No, go on. <laughs> the theory behind it is, is it, it, if you look at the hypothesis of whether or not we're in a simulation, it's almost guaranteed statistically that we are, because there's three ways that humanity will go: they'll either kill themselves, blow themselves to annihilation, go extinct, uh, uh, um, or they'll get, or two ways, or they'll get through that hurdle. And then the theory is is that the, the next stage would be to actually replicate uh, experiences through a computer. Yeah, Brian Cox has talked about it before. Has he? And, and he's, he he said that it's one of the few conspiracy theories that, that scientists actually can't yeah. disprove. Disprove. The uh, other thing is, is again, people from MIT have looked at um, uh, uh, theories and equations and have seen source code of equivalent of source code, computer source code, in uh, in certain equations. It's like the, it's kind of the Terminator two theory, isn't it? Like we're all going to be killed by the robots. Oh, the Matrix. They're, they're, but they're doing it already with AI, with AI. So they've oh. set these two 
AI computers up yeah. and let them just roll with it. They and they start, off. they start communicating and they start creating a language that doesn't exist. That between themselves. And talking between themselves. Mm. And so eventually they shut them down. I mean, it wasn't getting... It wasn't getting to the point where they were going to do they it. They were unlinked to it. They weren't it just became, to it world. just became useless information, so they switched it off. But, but I mean, Professor Stephen Hawking, he's got rest his soul, is one of the biggest concerns, wasn't it? Uh, AI. But to me, it's, it's all very... Elon f- Musk is terrified. Yeah, I know. It? It's all very flat earthy to me. Flat earth, flat earth is a, a what's it, but when you start looking at it and you start looking at quantum theory and stuff like that, uh, it starts to make a lot more sense. Flat earthers don't make more sense because you can disprove flat earth conspiracy theory very, very quickly. Uh, you can't disprove uh, the simulation theory, and that's why it's fascinating. <laughs> but hey, I'll, I'll bring that in. Because AI is, it is terrifying because you just mentioned it. What is everybody mm. going to do when the computers are doing it all? Yeah. Well, I think there's, there's a kind of theory of um, universal basic income mm. isn't it? that we all, we all get... A, because that that wealth has to be dis- redistributed, we all get a universal basic income, and then we we can all go off and do something creative with it, mm. or full, something that's going to fulfil you. Um, it's very deep. This it is deep. It is deep. But then it gets the whole ecological argument and um, the fact that it's already too late to say. I still planet. don't. I still don't get the old AI thing. I totally understand what AI means, um, but. but how AI is going to change the world. Or it is, massively. Possibly, but this is something I... So, so I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. Like with, it, the, There is a suggestion that it is, is going to, over the next 20 or so years, just rip the heart out of middle-class jobs. Mm. So something like a lawyer, right, where, or a paralegal-type person who they spend all their time looking through documents to find the legal argument within them or something. Right. Um, AI can now do that, mm. where it will scan it and it will apply the law to that document and produce the same work yeah. that that person was doing, but it will do it in a fraction of the time yeah. that the person was doing it in. Um, There's many, many more jobs as well. And lots of other A examples. lot of financial yeah. jobs, like yeah. accountants and stuff like well, that. I can, I, I can get that it. and I understand that, but ultimately at the end PA, of the day... PAs as but, well. But, nice. but at the end of the day, ultimately, that'll be controlled by somebody. So somebody will still gain one, lots of wealth one, from it. Yeah, yeah but it'll be one company. But, but, like it's just, but at the moment, it's just distributing the wealth, isn't it? Yeah, but it'll be... So or changing yeah, that, the wealth. That is the theory. So all these big... Com- the, whatever the big company is that owns the AI, they will have all the revenue. So that... If you're taking away jobs... The problem so, that you've got with it, though, is, is the way that Google makes its money is by selling ads to, for people who will use the service to uh, 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 um, buy something. And if, uh, if Google, Facebook and uh, Microsoft have got all the revenue and all the wealth, there's going to be nothing for anybody maybe it'll to be, buy. Uh, Maybe it will be beneficial to photography. Because mm. if, if no one has to worry about earning an income because it's, it's, it's been given to them. They can go out and produce loads of photography and go out and do landscape photography trips. and yeah. uh, Trips to the moon. Landscape. Who's going to be the first yeah. one to do a landscape photography trip? Didn't someone suggest that the in moon. the comments? Well, they'd say, I'm sure they did. They said on, on last week's video when you were talking about money yeah. not being, being no object. Yeah, right. they did. Why they don't you take Mars. a 100 megapixel camera to, to, the moon. to, to Mars did. it was? Yeah, was it Mars? Be the first trip to Mars. The, well, they, they debunked that and they said that the time it takes you to get there, there's no way in our lifetimes that humans will be able to travel to Mars. No, they Because the, radi- yeah, the radiation will no, kill them. No, not at all. NASA say they're colonising it yeah, well, in the 20s. Yeah, <laughs> we will see. That's NASA. We'll see. I'm Absolutely. just saying it's, it's, it's oh, an I'm argue. a great believer in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only because the programs that I watch from NASA, not yeah. conspiracy theorists, yeah. these these are Brian Cox himself said that we will be populating Mars yeah. in the 20s. Right. That's in 2020. I love, I love the way we talk about terraforming Mars and the moon when we can't have... even control the climate on our own planet. The, 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 unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, the world is going to hell in a handcart because, from an ecological point of view, there are two thousand species a day dying on this planet, and uh, we're worried about colonising a dead world. <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's, it's not that. It's not that, is it? This is the opposite. It's it's splitting up our world. What is there on Mars? It's for carbon dioxide no, atmosphere. No, it's, it's splitting the world. What That's what mean? they're talking about. It's because the whole of humanity, Gra- more, for us... More, grabbing more land. No, it's, mm-hmm. we're, we're on one planet. So if yeah. something was to happen to our planet, that's the end of humanity as we know it. Yeah. Wherefore, if you manage to, to, to... 
to don't, separate and go you, from one planet to another planet don't at you least. See the irony in that. No, uh, not we've at got all. the most beautiful planet that we know of it, 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 within light years. In fact, it's the only one we know of yeah. that is stunning. And what we're thinking of doing, rather than pulling resources into saving this planet, and actually the, the politicians waking up and saying, you know what, we're ruining the planet for the sake of a pound coin or a dollar. And what we'll do instead, we'll spend tens of billions to go and live on a rock 10,000 uh, miles, how many million miles away is it? Um, uh, that is inhospitable to life. I just find it crazy. Yeah, so I think some of them, I don't, I don't like some of the language around some of the environment stuff sometimes because I've argued with my sister about this, who's uh, big into her ecology and stuff. Mm. And the, the planet will be fine. Mm. We're not we're not yeah. mucking this planet up. No. We're making it more inhospitable for humans and the animals that live in it. That's why I like that the way that um, da that David, that. David Attenborough talks about it because he t he really focuses on the the wildlife. Yeah, and the planet will be fine without us. Mm. And if it gets like five degrees hotter, we'll yeah. probably we'll probably die off. Yeah, the planet but the planet fine. will be absolutely fine. And there'll, there'll be some kind of life that that's nature. There'll be some kind of life that benefits from that. It won't be lions. No. It won't be tigers. No, you've it hit won't the nail on the head. Like it, but it, it's just, it, it's so kind of self-centered almost, yeah. our attitude towards the planet. Oh, it's ultimate irony because, yeah. again, uh, using that term again, is we're the ones that we can do something about it just about if we do start now. And the only thing people it's going to benefit is us because when the tipping point does come, um, the world will carry on. I think one of the things that is also, I, I feel quite passionately about now with it, is that it's gone, and I've heard of quite a few climate change scientists mm. say this as well, that it's gone beyond it's, the point it, it, of personal responsibility. So the fact that you're turning your light switch off at night isn't no. going it, to, it's gone way beyond that being an issue. It's got to be something at an international level where we're agreeing to some That's, kind of new science or some global reduction. It's actually where they're saying that the China could actually be a real big leader in climate change because you know, although they're a big they're a big polluters with the, the massive population they've got, the due to the way that their government now is, which is essentially uh, a it's essentially a dictatorship, they could implement uh, something to rescue the climate just like that. Mm. Because right. he, he can just decide, right, we're going to save the climate today. Right. And that's what they'll go and do. So there's a lot of, quite a few of the climate change scientists and people that are passionate about it who actually are a bit concerned about criticizing China too much because they could make such a big impact mm. if overnight they just decided to do something. Whereas well, if that was in this country or in the US, we'll make there'd be difference. just so much, the democracy would just take a while to roll into actually taking some action. That's my concern, is because something needs to be done now. And it's not going to be done now. Yeah. That's, that, that, that's the worry and that's the concern. You meant the personal responsibility, switching light switches off. In all and the best of the world. any carbon footprint yeah, and stuff. It's just yeah. Well, I, I think, not, it, I think at, least, at least you're having a go. Yeah. And when it all goes to hell in a handcart, you say at least you tried your best. Uh, but this is not about you uh, um, switching your lights off at night. This is about governments mm. and governments doing something and understanding and they're not going to do it until it's too late and you know it's 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 the attitude so you've got and I, whether you agree with it or not political um uh, demonstrations where there were people in london bringing traffic to a halt to bring up ecological problems and the, the press was incredibly negative well mm. they're holding us up because we're going to work yeah. well what they're trying to tell you is that there will be no work to go to in 30 yeah. or 40 years so time funny, because london will be underwater did you see one of the comments that said like i'm all i mean i'm in total support of you but you're stopping me from so, getting to work so in it's annoying morning. me yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and i'm not laughing at that person uh, but what I'm saying is, 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 when we wake up and smell the coffee, it's going to be too late and I've got kids. I think that's the opportunity we have as photographers, though, especially landscape photographers, is that you can make a difference by alerting people to how beautiful the world is. I think so. I think you're right. By creating yeah. these images and putting them out there and sharing them mm. uh, and letting people see your work. To, and same with wildlife photographers, any kind of nature photography. Yeah. You can show the world how beautiful it is. Mm. Uh, and that's kind of the line that. Uh, David Attenborough went down with the Blue Planet stuff, wasn't it? He oh. he showed the world how beautiful these animals are, how mm. beautiful this landscape is. But then, and this is what we're doing to it, mm. and that, that had such a massive impact, didn't it? And we can support that. I, I mean, look at the pla the plastic thing. I mean, that's taken off massively. 
yeah. you, uh, human As support. As I'm drinking out of uh, yeah, no, plastic. No, but um, um, what, if it's there, they'll provide it. I mean, even little things like the McDonald's uh, straws. <laughs> McDonald's straws that are made, awful. That the made paper... me chuckle though, because it was only like twenty, was it about twenty five years ago that wood mm. was a big issue, wasn't it? So yeah. we were trying to save the trees. So we went plastic. So we went everything went to plastic to yeah. stop using wood. And yeah. Now we're using paper. We're going back to paper. paper. <laughs> no, they're horrible. <laughs> they're horrible uh, 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 feel. But there's one. Uh, there's one thing I can't. Our get... kids, were, my kids, were well for <laughs> it. They said, "Yeah, no, I want to use it, and we can get metal straws, Dad, if we ever go to McDonald's." I was at the. Uh, I was at the uh, the the dump the other day. Putting, chucking some garden waste in there and this dad was there with his like 14 year old son or something and he, he they were pulling a load of plastic old plastic stuff out the back of this car like boxes and stuff just old plastic gear they didn't need anymore and um he the dad asked where they asked one of the guys where do we put this he's just saw in um in general waste in number four mm. and his son it blew his mind mm. that leeds county council um, recycling plastic at the dump, Just chuck it in general waste because they can't. Nah. So, it, it, but it blew his son's mind, and his you could, his son was getting so agitated yeah. by the fact that you couldn't recycle this plastic because it, it's yeah. called a recycling center as well now, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we don't want your plastic. <laughs> yeah, just chuck your plastic in <clears> general weird. waste. It's going in the ground. <laughs> there's, there's one thing I don't quite understand is if you go to McDonald's because you mentioned McDonald's earlier on, mm. they use these waterless toilets, saying yeah. they're saving billions of gallons do, of yeah. water. Yeah. Now, I can't get my head around that because if we were saving water because so that Africa could gain from it, I understand that, but they're not. And we don't run out of water mm. in this country. So I don't understand what Be, that actually means. Because McDonald's is a multi is a global corporation. Mm. So it, yeah, but it, it doesn't mean anything. You're well, saving water in the UK, it, yeah, in the UK, but we don't run out of water in the UK. That, but that's because you, that's a bit... Blinking, isn't it? Uh, they've got um, uh, outlets in Africa as well. Yeah, but I still does it. It's not like the, the not water we save put, here, and we bottle put... it and send it to Africa. I get that. Or if there was gonna... a big pipeline, instead of this water going to all the McDonald's toilets, it's now going to go to a under un, under the sea There's, and all the way to Africa. The same thing applies with water. And I've I've looked into this a little bit, but uh, the kind of opinion I've come to is that there are two different issues with water. There are natural resources of water yeah. that's, that provide... There's places in Scotland where the, these these lakes are running... Re, locks and lakes and locks are running really, really dry. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's bad for the wildlife. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a genuine problem that we're struggling with. What isn't a problem, though, is is water for human consumption. Yeah, when, because you say, we, when because, you're saying it's not a problem, it's not a problem because we've got lots of water, but it's got to be treated. Yeah, it's but that's the thing. Be... If, if there was an economic reason, right, to create a lot of desalination plants yeah yeah we could easily and particularly in, in in the developed countries oh, do it. we do could it build tomorrow. it for, we could build it for third world countries if we really wanted of course to we, could. we stopped spending so much money on war mm. and built desalination plants for africa for yeah. example everyone would have clean drinking water because they would. london supply london has a desalination plant it desalinates sure. the thames and provides like Three million homes, I think. With I didn't know that. Two or three million homes with diesel, with yeah. water, fresh water. Sounds a bit scary, that doesn't it? But it's but Why? it's there. Like, is it water from the Thames? Thames then comes out your tap. You know no how, what they you do know how many times it. the water that you're drinking now has been through a human being? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because water doesn't go anywhere, does it? I remember, I remember learning that in history. Like, <laughs> my history scary, teacher said, like, water doesn't, it doesn't, it's not created, it doesn't go anywhere else. Yeah. And he said, he said, you could essentially be drinking the same water that's been through Julius Caesar. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. absolutely I, blew my mind. I, I, yeah. And it's <laughs> like, it's like the, the, the atoms that make up your body come from the stars. Comes from what? The stars. Well, he is from the such, a, and he's the stars. such a big star, well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I say no more. <laughs> but uh, you, we mentioned offset and carbon footprint. Is there anything you two guys do to, uh, from a photography point of view or otherwise to offset your carbon footprint? I don't fly very often. No. <laughs> That's That's all this started because, because we asked you what you would do if you were rich. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. What AI, I mean? carbon footprint. Straws in McDonald's. I mean, it's something personally I've been doing for donkey's year. We're going to so, have problems with this stuff now, aren't we? Carbon, carbon footprint. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, as the AI in photography, I think, is uh, mm. is an interesting one, though. Because mm. uh, particularly around... We're not talking but, ecology anymore. Well, I just you, don't get it. But particularly, no, but particularly, so say, like, this, this fun, like Paul was saying, that fun now will perfectly expose a picture. Mm. If you, you could point that out their window now yes. and it would perfectly expose it. If the same thing happens mm. with composition, so you, for example, right, you, you hold that. 
He moves it up and down, you and then he goes beep, 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 and it goes green. Yeah, move your camera around. Yeah. yeah. And you just do this. And then it'll go green. It, and then it tells you, it draws a box on the screen for you, line the camera up with this box, yeah. Yeah. and then that's what you do. Take the picture, and we're all taking what you sort of talk about, perfectly composed, yeah. rule of third shots. Yeah. yeah. And, and so everybody can do that. So that skill yeah. no longer really exists in yeah. people. Like it's, you know what? You can never take away. It can, well, it maybe could do, and maybe it will do. Because maybe I'm sounding old, but the artistic nature of getting an image, and that's why the things that draw my eye to a shot um, is it can work out what the perfect exposure mm. is, and this, that, and the other. But it takes away that artistic thing. It goes back, and this maybe could we could finish on this. It goes back to your picture there. That picture works awesome. Yeah, but no SR8000. amount of but no amount of AI will dictate what that picture that, will look that's like. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm or saying. Or what I want the picture to look that's like. That's what I'm saying. Because there's artistic element to that. Because the AI might say, "Well, I've got to shoot it at ISO 1000." You never get that shot. Let's hope so. Yeah. Mm. So that was everyone. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I think I need I need a cup of coffee. I need to breathe. So, yeah. Thanks for listening. Seven seconds. <sighs> Thanks for listening. I'll yeah. see you in the next one. Cheers. Well, uh, should we be a bit lighter on the next one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it was a good. No, I like it. I, like I think it, it was like a good it. discussion. It's good.